today I'm going to talk about three popular genome file types. If you've had a DNA test before, you might have one of these file types or all of them just sitting on a hard drive somewhere. And just to clarify, this video is for everyone. You do not need a PhD to understand what's to come. And a quick tip, if you have had a DNA test um, and the company only gave you a report, like a PDF, definitely contact them and see what you can do to get your raw data or other genome files. If you don't get these files, you are not capitalizing on the investment you made when you order that test. Data is power today, so go get yours. FASTQ is the first file type we're gonna talk about. Imagine that the sequencer read off 150 letters of your DNA at a time and spit out each 150 letter block into a file. This is what the FASTQ file is, and we actually call each of these 150 letter blocks a read. For each sequence read, there are three lines of data that accompany it. The first line includes the name of the read, what sequencing machine was used to create it, and exactly where on the sequencer flow cell the read was located. The second line is the read, which again is about 150 base pairs of your DNA. The third line is always a plus mostly for aesthetics. And the fourth line has the quality scores for the read. So for each of these letters or bases in the read, the sequencing machine estimates how confident it was that the base call is correct. Sometimes, for example, the signal of a base call is weak, so the sequencer gives the base a lower quality score. These quality scores look strange at first, but each symbol corresponds to a numerical quality score. Now you might be wondering, what happens if one base call in a read is very low quality? Will you ever know what base you have there? The answer is probably yes, because your genome was probably read more than once. In fact, it may have been read up to 30 times. That means that if one base is low quality, you probably have 30 more reads that cover that same spot and have higher quality base calls there. This concept is called genome coverage. With 30x coverage, meaning that your genome was read about 30 times, we should be able to tell each base of your DNA with at least 99.9% .9 accuracy. That was a lot of detailed information, but what it comes down to is that the FASTQ file holds your whole genome sequence in unordered pieces called reads, and it holds information about how accurate each base of each read sequence is. Now, if we pick a random read from your FASTQ file, we will have no idea where in your genome the read is coming from. We don't even know what chromosome it's on. So what we have is a very big genome puzzle on our hands. This is where genome alignment comes in. Genome alignment is the process of taking each read sequence from your FASTQ files and finding where it came from in your genome. This is done using the human reference genome. The human reference is the whole genome sequence of the average human. During alignment, each read gets compared to the human reference genome and gets assigned the location where it matches best. This happens for each read in your FASTQ files. At the end of the alignment, you'll have your whole genome sequence in order, and this is what's stored in a BAM file. Now a BAM file is actually a binary file, so if you open it, you'll see a bunch of strange characters. The non-compressed version of a BAM file is called a SAM file, which is actually human readable. I won't get into the details, but here's the sequence that was aligned, here's the chromosome, and the position on the chromosome where it was aligned. And the SAM file goes on like this. If you were to stitch together each of these sequences, you would get your complete genome sequence in order. However, as you may have guessed, your genome is not exactly the same as the reference genome. It's estimated that there are about 4 to 5 million places in your genome that are different from the human reference. Typically, these are precisely the locations we're interested in, because they are what make you unique. So after genome alignment, your genome sequence is again compared to the human reference genome, and each place where it differs is listed in a file called VCF. So the VCF contains the four to five million places where you are different from the average human, insofar as the reference genome accurately represents the average human. Each row in a VCF is one variant, and no matter where you get your VCF from, it should have these eight columns. 
The first column is the chromosome, followed by its position on the chromosome, its name if it has one. Some variants have names that can be added here. Their names are called RSIDs, but in many cases you will see a dot here. The dot doesn't necessarily mean that the variant doesn't have a name. It may just mean that this VCF hasn't been annotated with variant names yet. Moving on, the ref column has the reference base, which is the base that the reference genome has at this location. And the alt column has the variant base or bases, one of which you have. Now the last detail I'll cover here is how to tell if you have two copies of this variant or just one. If you remember, you have two copies of each chromosome, one from your dad and one from your mom. So for each variant that you have, it's possible that you have it on both copies of that chromosome or just one. If you have two copies of the variant, whatever effect it has may be stronger. So here's how to tell. This GT field here stands for genotype. Here, the zero represents the reference base and the one represents the variant or alternate base. If you have zero one here, that means you have only one copy of the variant. If you have one one, that means you have two copies. We also call having two copies being homozygous and one copy heterozygous. You now have a basic understanding of FASTQ, BAM, and VCF files. In the next video, I'm going to cover cool things that you can do with each of these files without any technical experience. Thanks for watching. If this was useful to you, please subscribe and give a like. Thanks, guys.